Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how I'm gonna use this and worms to make super rich compost that's perfect for any garden. So stay tuned. Okay, so before I get to the design of this CFT, or rather the continuous flow through composter, I wanna talk about the why. If you know me, you know that I love making eco-friendly designs, and this is one of them. Also, at least here in the United States, we have a food wastage problem. According to the FDA for the year of 2020, we wasted approximately 30 to 40% of our produce. That's a lot of wastage. Also, I wanted to make a very simple, easy, and clean way to recycle food in an urban environment, so mostly indoors. And while I could buy a commercially available uh, vermiculture composter online, uh, the ones that I found were either too expensive, too messy, too difficult to uh, harvest the castings, which I'll talk about in a second, or just not modular enough. So I wanted to design something that was compact, and again, as I mentioned earlier, easy to use. Now, before we get any further, I'd like to talk about vermiculture. Vermiculture, for those of you who don't know, it is the use of worms as the composting agent to break down organic matter into highly nutritious compost. Now, when I say compost, I'm referring to the worm castings, which I mentioned earlier, which is really just the poop of the worms. Before you go, ew, that's disgusting, you should know that the worm castings as a compost is super high in nutrients and microbes that your plants need to thrive. Also, unlike commercially available traditional fertilizer, you won't burn the roots of your plants or the leaves should you accidentally fertilize. Now that you know the benefits of vermiculture, let's talk about my current setup and the problems with it. Then we're gonna loop back to this new design and show you guys how I'm gonna use it. Okay, so this is my current vermiculture composting setup. The way it works is that it's comprised of three five gallon buckets stacked on top of each other. The two buckets on top have holes drilled in the bottom and the bottom bucket has no holes at all. The worms on top will basically consume the organic matter and then their castings will slowly make their way down into the second bucket through the holes. Then any excess liquid, also called leachate, falls into the third and bottom bucket. While this setup is extremely simple, it does come with its own host of problems. The two biggest problem, well number one, is worms escaping. So these buckets obviously are not clear and light does not go through them. Now worms are very averse to light so they don't like it. However, since these buckets are opaque, they actually climb up the inside side of the walls on the bottom bucket and actually escape between the uh, buckets themselves, which is why I have the bag over here. Number two uh, for the problems that this has is how hard it is to uh, get out the castings. So in order to get out the castings, you need to lift up this uh, top heavy bucket and then you need to collect the castings in the second bucket. However, it's no easy task as many worms will fall below and since they can't see the light, which is tied it into problem number one. And also the casting amount is very limited because there's no active uh, force pushing the castings down. And I aim to fix all these problems, hopefully with the new design, which we're gonna talk about now. All right, let's dive into the new design. We can break this up into three separate sections, which will be the lid, then the bucket system, than the actual stand. Let's first talk about the central part, which is the bucket. Okay, the bucket is the heart of the system. I like to call this whole part the rotary vermiculture composter, and I'll explain why in just a second. The way it works is that uh, this whole area will be filled with a combination of soil, worms, and organic matter. As the worms consume the organic material and turn the soil more into castings, uh, they will basically move down. And then as you can see over here, there's a blade below. As you spin this, it will cut off the lowest layer of castings and drop it down below into a bucket. Now, this part over here, as you can see also down below, uh, this is what I like to call a uh, Delta style shaft retainer. Now I custom designed this, right? And the one in the bottom is diametrically opposed as you know, as opposed to the top over here. And if you see also at the bottom over here, you can see there's a grate held in by 3D printed uh, retainers. And this will serve as a, well, a grate to kind of break up the castings as the blade spins by. 
Also here on the sides, you can see a bit of the threaded rod uh, sticks out and I'm gonna show you why that's important later on. Now let's talk about the lid next. The lid is just as important as other components to the operation of the system. This is comprised of a standard five gallon bucket lid. However, there's more to this than meets the eye. As you can see from the bottom, there's these air holes with these 3D printed uh, grates here. Now these grates have a spacing of half a millimeter, which is too small for mites to crawl out. However, as you can see right through them, they provide great airflow compared to let's say like a cloth over the holes, right? In the center, there's a 3D printed bung and threaded cap. So then you can easily just unscrew this out, turn the nut in the bucket below without having to remove the lid. And this makes it nice and convenient. Then on the bottom, again, over here, you can see there's a weather seal, so no worms can escape out. Now let's talk about the stand. The stand is the last integral part of this whole system. Basically on top, uh, it's a flat piece of uh, three quarter inch plywood with a hole cut into it with these little notches for the uh, threaded rod nuts, as you've seen on the bucket. Over here, these are called the anti-torque mounts. And if I get the bucket, you'll see that the threaded rod tips just thread nicely or rather sit nicely into these mounts. So as you're turning the nut over here, the whole bucket will not spin. Also with the handle, it provides an easy way to just pull out the bucket. Below, you can see there's a tiny little shelf for the uh, collection bucket. So as you turn the nut in the bucket system, it will cut off the lowest layer of castings as I mentioned earlier, and it'll fall into a collection bucket. However, you'll also notice that this uh, bucket is clear. So obviously light gets through. The idea is that if any worms fall into the bucket below, the light will stop them from crawling out. So we shouldn't have uh, many escaped worms. Might get one here and there, but it's not a big deal. Another thing about the bucket is that since it's open, uh, there won't be really any condensate on the sides. One of the reasons that worms climb walls is if there's condensate or rather liquid on the walls. So this should fix that problem. Now that I showed you the whole system, I'm gonna go ahead and take the worms out of my old uh, set up. I'm gonna put in the new ones and show you guys uh, how I'm gonna go ahead and do that. The first step is to lay down some thin recycled paper over the grate. That way when I put in the castings, uh, they'll have time to uh, stabilize and compact themselves before the first uh, casting harvest. Uh, the thin paper will kind of dissolve and compost into the castings, so uh, it will disappear by itself. What you see me doing here is uh, separating the worms from the castings. Now I started this bin in September of 2020, so most of the bin is castings. Uh, this gives me opportunity to leave some castings aside for my garden. And I'm also adding shredded paper and powdered oyster shells uh, just to control the pH and moisture. All right, look at the quality of these castings. In the vermiculture world, this is referred to as black gold due to how nutritious it is. So I'm gonna uh, put this in a bucket for later and then I'm going to go ahead and fill up the uh, CFT uh, composter with the remainder of the uh, castings and the worms. All right, it started raining, so I had to cut it short a little bit. Um, the last thing we had to do is just take these pieces of uh, recycled paper, the same as the one in the bottom. And we're just gonna put it here lightly on top, and that'll just help retain moisture and uh, encourage the worms to come up to the surface a little bit. I'm gonna wait a few days before I feed them, just so you know uh, they can acclimate to their new environment, right? Now, as I mentioned before, once I cap this, all I had to do is just remove the threaded cap on top, and then I can go ahead and rotate uh, that nut and which will rotate the uh, shaft, which will then rotate, of course, the blade, right? And then uh, the casting should be caught in the bucket below. 
Now, the only thing is I need a way for the soil to be, uh, or rather the casting to become more compacted so that this it supports itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and wait a few weeks before I actually harvest uh, my first batch of castings. Now after that, it's gonna be a once a week uh, process to take out the castings. Now, you saw the process in the time lapse before. It took me roughly 30 minutes, uh, 30, 40 minutes to separate those castings. However, this should turn into a, well, roughly, you know, 10 or 20 second process because all I had to do is remove the cap, rotate the nut a few times, and then uh, I should have my castings ready to go. In the coming weeks and months, I'll be making update videos as to how I feed the worms, how I harvest the castings, and any sort of flaws associated with a prototype like this. I'm also in the process of patenting this, uh, not for profit, but because I do believe this is a useful green technology, and I do want everyone to be able to access it uh, in an open source manner. I'd be happy to collaborate with anyone who's willing to. That concludes this video. If you like this content, please consider liking and subscribing, and if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comment section below. I'll see you guys next time.